Then you've got the book of Numbers that summarizes the generation that came out of Egypt and the cycle of rebellion and disobedience and judgment that led to them lying in the desert as their children finally went in 40 years later. And then Deuteronomy is Moses because he failed as well. In the wilderness, he got frustrated to the point and didn't honor and glorify God. And so God told Moses he would not get to enter in. And so out of that entire generation, only two Israelites got to go into the land of rest. And so Deuteronomy is Moses speaking five different times to the people, reminding them of everything that God has done in their history to bring them to this point before he finally goes up Mount Nebo to look into the land in anticipation of what God would do when his time with them was over. Getting here to Mount Nebo, even for our crew, this has been an exhausting journey. And it was nothing compared to the 40 years of the Israelites getting here. But there's such a sense of excitement and anticipation. Standing at the top and looking across the valley into the land of rest. This is the land that God had promised to Abraham and his descendants. And Moses gets to look in and see what the Israelites are about to inherit. And what we're feeling right now is so small in comparison to what Moses must have felt for them. Israel spent 40 years getting to this moment and Moses climbed to the top of the mountain and after God's people being sojourners for all of those generations, on the eve of them arriving in a home, he gets to look in and see how good the land is. I feel tension between the disappointment that this moment marked for Moses, and at the same time, the joy that he must have felt of a job well done. He shepherded God's people for 40 years knowing that it was going to be hard, and it was. He didn't respond to every test of faith well. He was human, and he made mistakes. And this mountain marks the tension at the close of his life, where he gets to look in and he does not get to experience the arrival in the Promised Land, but he gets to see it, and in faith, he gets to see what Israel is about to inherit. He did his job well and shepherded God's people well. And I'm so grateful that God didn't measure Moses' faithfulness based on his worst day. And that at the end of the day, he was still called the friend of God. Chronicling Moses' life and being here, I appreciate that. There may be some who wonder, what does the story of the Israelites have to do with me? I come from a different family and background and tradition. But the Bible tells us that for those who choose to follow God, those who accept and follow his son Jesus, we have been rescued out of the slavery of our sin and are being led to a rich promised land of rest. We belong to God's family. We are part of God's chosen people. We are the next chapter of this beautiful history and heritage. The story of the Exodus is our story.